immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. I see you as a and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. We're back uh, this segment now on a discussion segment where we'll be taking a look at uh, the security, talking about uh, how do we guarantee the security of life and properties. And of course, most people who are going to be involved in, in the general election come March 28 and April 11. These are some of the issues we're going to be taking a look at. Uh, uh, are we ready in terms of security? How prepared are we? Uh, in terms of security. And joining us in the studio right now to discuss this is Femi Adigulu, an associate professor and security expert. He is also the secretary to American Society of Industrial Security, Lagos chapter. Thank you for joining us on call just as well this morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, I must say you look great, uh, really. Thank you. Well, uh, let's quickly, Femi, I just want us to take a look at. Uh, What's your assessment now in terms of security? Just seven days to go, uh, there are permutations uh, and the, the fears in the heart of people uh, are concerning security in this election. In terms of security, what is your assessment really? Well, I can say so far the military has done so wonderfully well. Uh, at least the one we see on newspapers and the, what we hear. And the fact that the Boko Haram's element have uh, beaten a lot of retreat in recent times shows that the military have been making a lot of progress in pushing them away from our territory. And the last time we heard that um, almost all the communities have been reclaimed by, by the Nigerian forces and only a few that are left in, a, in Bono State. Mm. And a lot of effort is being made now to make sure that they are pushed away from there. I think uh, it's the military really that can really tell us the actual situation of uh, security in those areas now as regards people exercising their franchise. Uh, but from what we read on newspapers and what we hear from radios, at least we want to say that uh, unlike what uh, used to be in a few months before now, uh, we, that those areas were a no-go area. But now I think uh, there is free movement and uh, we can say to a large extent that there is a, we're almost there. A, a lot of analysts are saying that say, before uh, now, it's like it's taking too long for the security that we have in Nigeria, talking of security bodies that we have in Nigeria, the DSX, the army and the police to tell us exactly how they are going to go about uh, security or securing life and property during this election. Do you think, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think it's too late uh, for, uh, for them now, or why they are not coming to, to, uh, I mean, out to tell us what exactly they have their plans in terms of security? Well, it's it just like everything in Nigeria today is being politicized. Sometimes you really don't know why certain things are happening. Uh, you, certain silence that you observe sometimes looks so tendentious, as if uh, is deliberate so that um, what the yearnings of Nigerians could be mm. scuttled as, as, as far as the election is concerned. Uh, much as I wouldn't want to subscribe to that thought now, I, I want to also join my voice to those who are saying that uh, the military is not forthcoming as to exactly the state of security right now uh, pertaining to those who are going to vote there. I, I want to also use this medium maybe to to ask the military to tell us in categorical terms whether those areas that have been rescued can actually go out and vote. Otherwise, what means have been put in place to mm -hmm. make sure that those who exercise their franchise? Because like, like you said, sometimes if one wants to reason along that line, one will be thinking that maybe it's a ploy, you know, so that uh, they will use it as last minute uh, uh, joke card to say, well, sorry, 
I don't mm. think election can take place in this area and all this area. So, uh, you know, you know the implication of that to the political parties. You know, they will be throwing a kind of uh, accusation here and there, and that alone is capable of uh, rubbishing the whole exercise. Uh, that, uh, because what they are saying really yeah. is that if they could come out to tell Nigerians when the election was uh, postponed uh, that uh, we cannot guarantee the security of life and properties uh, during the election, they should also be come, uh, come out now, uh, now that uh, we just have a week to the election to tell us how exactly uh, they come out. But the, the question now is, uh, uh, the, do you think really that uh, the... The, this, this, uh, in, not, in the northeast, don't you think that a special arrangement should be made for those people, especially those in the IDPs, to really participate? Otherwise, they will be disenfranchised. Yeah, I think uh, if what I heard from uh, Jega recently, or not yesterday or the day before, that those in a camp, mm -hmm. I think uh, it would be advisable to, to uh, make them do their own, own vote at the camp where we have uh, you know a security indeed not all those uh, clusters in those locations where uh, they cannot really guarantee whether uh, the bad guys are still lurching around i think uh, that arrangement will be wonderful if extended to all the other areas that are prone to violence so to have them in a controlled area so where there is adequate security to make sure that they all exercise their franchise i think that is the best thing to do right now. If it needs evacuating them, all those who have their PVC ready to cast their vote, evacuating them to a safe haven where they can cast their vote is better that way than disenfranchising them. And just like you said that the military also need to come out to even tell us how exactly they intend to do uh, to carry these out in terms of security of life and properties uh, during this election. Uh, do you think there is any plot to, to further shift the election? Ah, if one is to go by all the social media and all, all we have been reading in social media, you see a lot of plots here and there, you know. But some of these cannot be rightly authenticated. But you see, behind every every you know smoke there is a fire. If one um, judges by all the cacophony of voices one has been hearing, and also all the uh, you see body language. That uh, certain political parties are, are, are displaying no PVC. We don't want this. We don't want that. You begin to wonder how can anybody, mm. you know, go against something that will that will that, that, that will that will enable Nigerians to exercise their their vote with confidence. Something that will, that is real proof. How mm. can anybody contest it for God's sake? So you begin to see that there is something in the offing that so certain people are just not comfortable the idea of PVC because it will rubbish all the plan, all the grand plan they have you know, to, to, to rig. So all that will be rubbish. And so that's why also certain individuals are calling for the head of INEC, HMA and all that and all that so that they can plant somebody who will be pliable, who can do their bid and all that. So talking about the, uh, the, the, the phone conversation, the video reveal about Ekiti Saga and all that. So when you look at all these things, you just begin to wonder that, look, there are certain people who just want things done their way, the way it has always been, so that if you only favor, you know, favor them, they, they, are, they, they, they are not really um, people who, 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 who want to, who, who don't want uh, the status quo to remain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the problem we have. Now, if you look at all these things, you see that there are so, there are so many plots to make sure that if it does not go our way, we either do it this way. So I think there are plots like that. I, I want to believe that from all we have been mm -hmm. seeing, I think uh, it, it would be naivety for somebody to think that everybody is thinking rightly in this country today. Mm. But, but just like the UN has uh, come out to say that anybody who will foment trouble, uh, that person will be persecuted. What is the implication should uh, should, just like uh, there are speculations that election might be shifted again, how crucial in your own, uh, uh, as an security expert, how crucial do you think this election, we need peace in this election? How, how crucial do you think peace is important? Ah, <laughs> the fact is that we cannot underrate the importance of peace at all, because in the absence of peace, there is no governance. 
So when we don't have peace, that's when we have anarchy. And anarchy is opposite of government. So when there is peace, there is government. So we need peace to ensure that the, uh, the exercise of uh, the election is held. Uh, we need peace even after the election to make sure that go governance continues. We need peace to even do business with the international community. Without peace, who will remain here to do anything? In the absence of peace, nothing happens. And that's why it's only, I want to believe, if the UN has lent its voice that whoever for men's trouble will be prosecuted, I will be so happy if that one is coming from the UN. Because they are the only people now that I, I, I have confidence in who can actually do what they say and prosecute the person all, all through. Because our judicial system today, we all know how it works. But if international uh, community is probing or has even sentenced uh, Mrs. Bagbo to jail, mm. you, you can imagine the extent to which they can go. And that's why I have confidence that if the UN has the same interest in Nigerian polit politics, it, it would be wonderful for us so that people will actually be careful what they say or what they do because the campaign these days, the language they use and all that, my brother, is, uh, is terrible, very terrible. But looking at the peace accord signed uh, in Abuja uh, between some of these political parties or those who have a candidate uh, vying for the position of a president, do you think it has really worked uh, when you compare uh, 2015 election to what we had in 2011? Well, the peace accord in itself has so many porous, uh, um, you know, it's very porous as far as I'm concerned because when you talk about peace accord, the, the gladiators, you know, the dramatic personnel themselves may just uh, stand akimbo and refuse to say anything. But their supporters, the supporters and their aides, they are the people who are actually fomenting serious trouble. Okay, who will you now hold? Is it the gladiator who has refused to say anything? That you can you, you can pin it down on that you say okay is the one doing the after all is the gladiator that, that signed the the, the pact the supporters were not there the um, the full soldiers that are being used here and there to, to to slander people to talk you know the way they like they are not there and so if the the, the, the language and what these people say now trigger up violence you can't hold any particular um, uh, you know um, presidential candidate or gubernatorial candidate. But, but how do you tackle such a situation where uh, some of these actors go and then relax and then we have supporters uh, coming out to foment trouble? How do you tackle, how do you handle such that, that a situation? That is the real problem there. I think uh, a clause that should be in that uh, uh, part, although I'm not familiar with it in the part, a, a, a clause should be that anybody whose supporters of followers for men trouble and it is proving that this is what actually caused this trouble so heavy sanctions should follow heavy sanctions should follow you know i, I wouldn't want to prescribe any sanction about sanction that we but, but so, so, so what you're saying is that uh, probably something really was not too uh, proper about the peace accord yeah of course it, it, it's very porous very poor it's not something you can take to the um, to the bank at all it's not something that that, that is binding on the individual. The individual who I never said anything. You know, I don't know what the people from any trouble. Did you see me at the scene? Did you hear what anything I said? You understand? So maybe and um, and um, 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 is the lieutenants that are making all these uh, inflammatory uh, statements so that are causing uh, trouble here and there. Okay. For instance, if somebody's wife who was not at the pact, who was not uh, a party to the pact, is making inflammatory statement. And some, some other people are now retorting to what uh, the woman has said. So who, who do you now hold? You can't hold the principal, for instance. It's the wife that is making the statement. The wife will say, well, this is the contest in which I made the statement and as a citizen I have the right to make. You understand what I'm saying? So who do you now hold? And we've been seeing all this all over. No, but, but looking at this, do you think it's something we need to look into uh, uh, it, it, in future or in subsequent elections, looking at hate speeches, uh, all over during this campaign uh, a lot of people have said that uh, this should be taken into account and uh, some of these hate speeches and those who made them should be brought to book what are your thoughts on all no, that hate speeches always come because 
when people are bereft of ideas, there is nothing else to say. They do not have any innovation to make into the system anymore. They are just not there, nothing, for, nothing to offer. They, they now resort to individual attack. They begin to in, attack individual instead of them to address issues. We've been saying this over and over and over again. People who make these hate speeches, look at them critically. You see that they really don't have anything to offer again. They are looking for a way of denigrating the opponent seriously so that people will not see anything good in them. But they are, the question is, what do you want to do? What improvement do you want to make from what is on ground? It's not, we know these people. You don't need to be telling us this one was this, this one was that, even to the extent of exaggeration, things that are not real. You understand what I'm saying? All these hate speeches come as a result of desperation. Because this people just know that, ah, this man that is coming is likely to upset the whole system. No, let's try and destroy him in the eyes of the people. These are the things that bring up uh, his speeches. Okay. Tell us what you want to do. Tell us what you can do for Nigeria. Tell us how you can take us from where we are now to where we expect to be. It's not uh, telling okay. us about the okay. keys. In, okay, family, let, let me hold your thoughts there. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yeah, good morning. I get uh, hello. Yay. Well, we we'll have to let uh, that call go now. Please call back and ensure that uh, uh, you you stay away from uh, noise and whatever would disturb before you can call. But looking at uh, the 2015 election and 2011 election, if you go back, what have we learned so far from 2015 election? And if you look at uh, post-election violence. Uh, in 2011, a lot of lives uh, were, were lost. What what lesson can we learn? We can take from 2011, and then that we ca that can put us straight uh, to making this uh, 2011 uh, a memorable one. In 2011, actually, though there are still two uh, prominent gladiators, just like uh, 2015. Uh, in 2011, it is like uh, one party took the other for granted. Also, so, you know, so in 2011, what happened in 2011 was a situation whereby almost everybody was still thinking that, okay, this one has um, the, the right to continue, and because uh, the circumstances that brought him there, he has not really been tried, let's give him a chance so that he can accomplish so, 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 and all that. So there is this sentiment, even to some other uh, unexpected quarters, you know, which gave a massive vote at that time. But now, in 2015, you know, uh, there is now discovery. Just, just you talk about 2015. Uh, let's quickly pick up this call. Hello, good morning. This is called RGSS. Hello, good morning. How are you? Yeah, good morning. Great, great. How are you today, sir? Uh, fine, thank you. This yeah. is Mr. Awumodu. Okay, go ahead and with your contribution. I'm listening to what the man is saying. <laughs> yes, Hello? please go ahead. Please go ahead. Awumodu. Please go ahead. Do you, you hear me? Yes, we can get you, sir. We can hear you clearly. I can hear you again. Hello? Okay, you can call, call back, uh, Mr. Awuwudu, and uh, make a contribution. Uh, yes, we're talking about uh, 2015. Yeah. In, in 2015, for instance, uh, the party now discovered that the opponent cannot be taken for granted. You see, they, they, they took the opponent for granted for a long time. You know, that's why you heard those speeches that uh, our party will rule for the next 50 years. You know, we are on ground, we are the largest in Africa, and all this and all that. So all of a sudden, they now see a, an opposition that is very vibrant and uh, is going to the heart of the people, penetrating and uh, with a lot of achievement from the states where the opposition are. Now, and with the presidential candidate, you know, they are taken aback. And the massive support that is being, you know, Ghana now is mm. a, a lot, causing a lot, a lot of problems. And that is why now we know they realize it. Mm. So it's Hello. like it's taking okay. them on away. Okay, so let, let's quickly pick up this call. Hello, good morning. Eh? Yeah, good morning. Where are you calling from? Good Tell us your name. Good, good morning. Yeah, good morning. This is called Ajay Sestra. <laughs> Hello? I'm really disturbed by the, the way NTA is being used to prepare ground for political crisis. Hello? Please go ahead. Turn down the volume yeah. of your TV set. It's the kind of uh, uh, 
campaign that is being carried out on the NTA allowed to be carried out on the NTA, Nigerian Television Authority is seriously at an alarming rate. Because people are not, go, I mean, uh, tackling three issues. They go after class assassination, they go into the party tree, instead of you know, addressing our mind to the current Nigerian problems. So when I say we don't want uh, 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 a political crisis, we don't want violence, but then here is being used to, to prepare ground for, for, for political violence. I think something has to be done about that. Okay, thank you very much. Hello? Yes. Are you done? It's very bad. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, but okay, let me but let me quickly ask you a question just before you go. Do you have your PVC? Oh, I have. I have. I have it. I have it since last year. Okay, I was great. the first set of people that uh, collected uh, the PVC. Okay, great. You can decide not to be part of any violence uh, during the election. And with your PVC, you have the power to determine who uh, what happened at the poll. Come next yes. Saturday. Well, something has to be done about the, the way NTA is being used. Well, thank you so very much. We can much. have peace in this country, maybe either before or after the election. Okay, thank you very much. That's well. Well, that's uh, exactly what I, I can only tell you now. You determine not to be part of okay. any violent, uh, irrega thank regardless you. of what you see okay. out there. Thank you very much for calling. Yeah, uh, Femi, just before we go to some, I just want us to take a break now. When we come back, uh, we'll talk more. We're talking about uh, uh, towards violence free pose, uh, calmness week Saturday. And that's exactly how uh, what we're talking about. How do we ensure uh, security of life and property uh, during this election? We'll take a break. We'll be back with more uh, to t on this program. Has it been a difficult task for you to purchase exquisite, classic, durable, and sturdy furniture that will last the test of time? Here is good news for you. Purchase high-quality furniture for your household, offices, hotels, and schools at Prince Interior Furnishing and Furniture Company Limited. Office address, Goshen Plaza, Showroom 28, Kubo Furniture Market, AYA, Nyanya Road, Abuja. Telephone, 0803-119-1444 or 09-291-7482. Email, princeemeka240 at yahoo.com. Info at princeinterior.com. Website www.princeinterior.com. Purchase your furniture at Prince Interior Furnishing and Furniture Company Limited. Classic, strong, exquisite. The army was not supposed to be visible or to be around any polling unit unless there is a breakdown of law and order and they have been invited by the Inspector General of Police. That elections are shouted in Africa is no news. But in Nigeria, it comes with consequences. Against the will of one man. Consequences that have toggled the nation's politics and may shape how Nigeria elects. This is the year of The momentum gathers. When we promise, we deliver. The fireworks is unending. We did it and continue to do it. 55 years this year, and in the fourth republic, this is Nigeria's fifth general elections. All the action, all the news, the updates, and the news behind the news we will bring to you live from the field and in the studio on Core TV News as Nigeria elects. Glad to have you back now. It's still called Ajis Estra and Femi Adegbulu, a professor, associate professor and security expert. He's still here in the studio. He is also the secretary of the American Society of Industrial Security, Lagos uh, chapter. Uh, thank you for being there. Uh, Femi. But let's take a look at um, INEC's decision to uh, deploy uh, military uh, Nigerian army uh, partial, it's saying he, they, what, let me put in that, that they, they are in support of partial deployment of the military uh, during this election. Uh, just if you want to look at it, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think because uh, recently we're hearing of uh, AKT issue where soldiers are, are used and the opposition, strongest opposition party, the APC, 
it's not quite cool with, with this decision. What are your thoughts on this? Thank you very much. Uh, actually, we should be situational in everything we do, especially now that we have uh, the Boko Haram ravaging some parts of the country and there is in great insecurity. Uh, one would say that it's a nice decision to have soldiers deployed to such areas so that uh, you know, the lives of the people will be saved, at least to you know, uh, exercise their franchise. Now also, but when you look at the recent Ekiti saga, you, you, you think about again the level at which the military has been politicized, as it were. Uh, you, you cannot but reason with the opposition that what is uh, about to happen is another Ekiti saga that is uh, being played around. Uh, it's very unfortunate that the, the army could be that compromised if, if what we heard uh, is true. And that is why many people are I feel with trepidation that look when you deploy army now and there is somebody who a political uh, big we, we go and brainstorm them to tell them look we appoint you we can uh, influence your promotion we can even see to it that uh, after this election if you don't do our bidding you are out of your office you your uniform be taken away from you then this person now gets marching order to a particular area where you know he's going to carry out uh, an assignment to do the bidding for his master. So we have serious problems with the deployment of army. Otherwise, the normal situation would have been to deploy army to make sure that lives are saved mm. in the place where these people are going to exercise their franchise. But with what we see at Ekiti, mm -hmm. and nothing has been done about it, and people are trying to Hello. deny what is mm. so obvious, okay. we have problems. Let's, let's go. Hello, good morning. This is called uh, Jesse Estro. Uh, tell us your name and where you're calling from. Hello? Yeah, good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Okay, Awamodu, yeah. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, uh, thank God uh, we have you now. Hello? Yeah, please, could you uh, do us a favor, turn down the volume of your TV set, then you can talk to us. Could you turn down the volume of your TV set? Hello, Mr. Awomodu? I'm not that. Okay, thank you very much. You can go ahead now. Okay, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Please, uh, what security is doing the election, please? When we go and vote, please, 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 please. When we vote, can we stay there or we move to the... To rest to our house, to our house, to All the right. resident. All right. That's what I want to ask from the the security expert in the house. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Awomodu, for uh, asking that question. Yeah. Uh, just before, uh, do you want to react yeah, to yeah, that yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, before yeah. we uh, go? Well, we've heard it from Ine Boss himself that there is no law forbidding any voter from actually remaining hanging around. Yeah, hanging around to monitor his vote, especially with the recent uh, experience in Nigeria. But what the, um, the Inspector General is saying, I don't think is in tandem with the law. You know, so many people have even um, reacted to that, that it's not against the law for individuals who have business at the polling booth to hang around to monitor his vote. Okay, I think it's mm. normal. Mm. Well, because okay. uh, do you think this might create uh, a kind of... Uh, you know, a kind of friction between the INEC staff and the police during that day. Because uh, at the end of the day, you're not going to have Jega, the polling booth, but then you have the ad hoc uh, staff and uh, yeah, some of yeah. the INEC staff. As around. long as the voters remain orderly, mm. that is the rule. It happened in 2011, so there is no rocket science in this thing. As long as the voters remain very orderly, so except if, if they are now provoked. Okay. Into, I mean, when they are provoked, they will respond. They will now say, "Oh, okay, that's the reason we say they should, they should, um, they should, you know, mm -hmm. stay, stay out of uh, the polling booth." You understand? They can be provoked in order to justify the order mm -hmm. of the Inspector General. Otherwise, the Nigerians I know who want to vote and remain there and monitor whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. But if they are provoked, of course they will react. But, but so if they but, now but react, they will now say, "Okay." To avoid life being, uh, because sometimes. 
uh, you could say they have right to monitor the uh, vote, but to avoid unnecessary uh, attraction, uh, do you think it is safe for any voter to remain? Uh, because some people say ordinarily you, you should vote and then go home and then wait. But it's not as if they will cluster around the voting uh, okay. environment, thereby disturbing others from voting. Just stay about 300 meters and just watch what is okay. going to happen. Just before we round up this segment, uh, what do you want to see? What are the things that you think are not right now in terms of security uh, that need that to be put in place before this coming poll? I, will, I wish we can depoliticize our military okay. and the police. I wish so much that we can depoliticize them, make them apolitical. I mean, because they are there to safeguard the exercise. They should not be political at all. They don't want to know whether you are PDP, whether you are AC, and, and, and uh, what is the opposition now? Uh, PDP uh, and, or, or APC. Or APC. So they are... Theirs is to just safeguard the exercise there and make sure that no life is lost. But I wish, I am still wishing, that we can depoliticize them. If that is done, definitely we will not have value. You see, it takes two to tango, okay? Nigerians that I know will normally go there to keep order, vote, and watch, and go. But if somebody provokes them, or somebody is trying to do something shady, or somebody who wants to do something shady, does not want them to be around there. So that's where the problem we, we are at because there is so much tempo now, there is so much tension now, you know, in, in the polity that people support this party, they want their party to win, the other one want their party to win. But let me advise Nigeria that it takes only one person to win in a particular contest. Okay? It takes one person to win. Let us be, uh, I mean, uh, be, be good losers and uh, those who win should also exercise some uh, benevolence in their victory. And that is very normal. Thank you very much, uh, Femi Adebulu, uh, for being part of the show uh, this morning. Femi Adebulu is who I've been speaking with. He is an associate professor and a security expert. He's also secretary to uh, American Society of Industrial Security Lagos Chapter. This is still called IGS. We'll take uh, a break now. When we come back, we'll have more to do on this program. Stay with us. brothers all perish together as fools martin luther king jr